Here, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the 6th Round Podcast, episode 47. We're coming up on 50 very quickly. Let's fucking Let's go. go. But we're here, <laughs> and we gotta review some cards. I was about to say, overall, pre- a pretty mid-weekend. Like, overall. Overall, a pretty shit weekend. Overall, yeah. it started off good, and it just consistently it started off good and consistently got worse throughout the weekend and that's just exactly how my rage is gonna go throughout this podcast <laughs> well your rage is gonna go up it's gonna get yeah. worse okay yeah yeah <laughs> yeah your rage is gonna do the opposite of how the weekend went it's the it's an inverse yes <laughs> so we'll start off with the good stuff because we did have some one championship on friday mm-hmm. uh one fight night 15 amazon prime <clears throat> as we were talking about in the preview, wasn't as good leading into it as it originally was scheduled to be, but it did end up being a pretty fun card overall. Which I expected. Yeah, it, it's one. One they, always delivers. <laughs> they got good matchmaking, they got good fighters. Mm-hmm. It, it, whether it's either going to be a solid fight, or you're going to be like, oh damn, they really mismatched these people, huh? And someone's going to have a beautiful performance, and you're just like, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But in the main event, we had the one interim featherweight championship on the line. Former champ Tan Lee taking on Ilya Framanov. Um, this what? Like this I said, was so easy. Yeah, I I didn't uh-huh. think it was gonna go long, but I didn't think it was gonna be this short either. Yeah. Yeah. Minute and two seconds was as long as that fight lasted. Um, rewatched it like this morning, and yeah, it just <sighs> realistically, like, even with it ending quick, this isn't how I thought it was gonna end either. Like, no. I thought someone was getting knocked the fuck out. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was about to say, mm-hmm. Ilya, what in his last two fights have been knocked, has been knocked down in the third round or something? Like, no, that was someone else. Uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. that, that was, was a smoking Joe card. heading, I'm pretty yes. sure, heading into a. Yeah, no, um, Ilya had, was on a five-fight winning streak with mainly first-round finishes, one second round in there. All yep. knockouts. That is oh, no, one bad. rear naked choke, sorry. But yeah, mix them up with someone who's not even the same nationality. <laughs> yeah, no, and then, <laughs> and then it's Tan Lee, who he lost the decision to uh, Tan, mm-hmm. uh, Tan Kai, but his last few fights have also been... All finishes, yeah, all ground yeah. and pound knockout stuff of that nature. So, like, yeah, for him to get the first round minute and two second heel hook, didn't think that. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's funny, too, because, yeah, he's got uh, Ryan Hall in his corner training at a 50 50 gym. Um, and, like, even on the broadcast, they were saying it that it's like uh, Tan Lee's ground game is kind of like a. It, it's just one of those things where it's like you hear about it, but you never get to see it. And just like kind of a legend, you know? And, but yeah, they went out. Um, Ilya did land a fr- pretty solid uh, left kick to the body, and then with um, a left right behind it, that did touch up Tan Lee. Um, mm-hmm. And then right after that, Tan went to go just throw a combo at him. Ilya gets right under, takes him down, and Tan Lee, like I said, he trains with Ryan Hall, so what the fuck are they going to do? They're going for the motherfucking legs, and instantly yep. rolls right under grabs the leg gets himself into a 50 50 position and then you see Ilya just like spin around trying to get out of it with that Tan Lee ends up uh getting a triangle lock with his legs over uh Ilya's so mm-hmm. like he tries to like you know just really step out of it hard and Tan just instant like just went with him and uh yep. yeah just ends up wrapping up the heel hook and yeah just over a minute Tan Lee gets the interim title beautiful performance yeah it really was <laughs> It was so nice of him to just wrap up that leg like that. And yeah, just actually got to see some of his ground Mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. One minute in one round, (laughs) but what we saw, it was pretty beautiful. (laughs) And yeah, 38 years old too, 11 years older than Ilya to just come in there and... Uh, Yeah. Like, that's just awesome, man. That's so such a good win Mm -hmm. for him. And yeah, it's just a lot of times you see guys go for leg locks and they... Like, yeah, they'll just throw their legs up, they, they'll they cross their heels or, like, you know, their ankles, whatever, and it just, like, don't have real good control over the other uh, person's leg as they're going for whatever, and, yeah, just switching off to that triangle with it, it just, Beautiful. it gave him everything that he needed. Mm-hmm. I know this is not UFC, this is one, mm-hmm. but Tan Lee out here, 
beating a guy that he's 11 years older than and winning a championship at 155 at the age of 38. Or 45. Yeah. Uh, well, 55, but it's featherweight, yeah. Oh, yeah, 45. Uh, yeah, yeah. But either way, you know, just well, like yeah, yeah. Uh, under the 170 division and being uh, older than 36 years old. Yeah. Doesn't count. That's why I said I know it's not UFC, but that's why I was also <laughs> adding in the factor that dude is 11 years younger than him. No, yeah. yeah. It's just uh, pretty crazy. Not no, yeah, that ever it, is. It is insane. I wonder it how much like... that stat would be skewed looking at other major promotions. Yeah. See, that's going to be a, like, yeah, I was about to say, it would, it would skew so much mm. because of things like, you know, having Bellator, PFL, Ryzen. I was going to say, with like the one, other bigger uh, promotions, a lot of them KSW. are older UFC guys or guys that just didn't make it there and they are older anyway, so. Yeah. That's, but they're... like I don't know, even even like Bellator, for instance. So like you know, champions one seventy and down. Like what? That's recent, true. Like, no, they're all young. Yeah, like you right know now, what? But... Maybe the oldest one as of recent was like Douglas Lima. You know, like yeah. he he might have he might be over that age. I'm I'm not sure, but yeah, you know, like it's like even then, like it's I mean, still not like recent. an old man's <laughs> game, really. You know what I mean? No, like, it's not. Or Patricio. I was about to He's thirty six. Patricio. Yep. Okay. There you go. Chris, There's your answer right there. <laughs> Patricio is up there. Uh, Patricio is not that much younger than him. He could only be like, what, two years younger than him? At? Something like that, but yeah. So, Either way, though, absolutely good shit for Tom Lee. Sets up that uh, title fight rematch with Tom Kai. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm definitely going to be excited to see how that plays out. Wonder if it'll wonder if uh, Tom Kai will be able to take him to a decision, or if Lee's mm -hmm. just going to stick to his, his normal ways of Kill or be killed, and we're not making it the distance. Yeah, right. But with that, that takes us to our co-main event. The Hurricane, John DeBella, was looking to defend his uh, um, strawweight title for the first time in... Uh, kickboxing? Yeah, okay, okay, I thought it was kickboxing. Um, that was... It was a fun fight. It was good. Mm -hmm. It was a fun fight. <sighs> Bro, that was fucking rough. His motherfucking leg, by the end of that fight, was purple just all around. Apart, ripped mm -hmm. off. Um, I. It was yeah. like after the second round, I was really thinking. I'm just like, damn. I wonder if Williams is like the damage to the leg. If he's gonna be able to like, if that's gonna have enough impact on Debella heading into mm -hmm. like you know the last three championship rounds and stuff. And mm -hmm. it just not Debella just stayed in front of him, just throwing big shots, yeah. big combos. And was just able to outwork him to a unanimous decision win, defending that title. So that that was just good shit for him. Um, no, yeah, for real. Like just as I was watching, I thought it was when you know he was pretty much like for the most part when I was watching it, uh, looked like he was winning. Like yeah, he was getting the damage to the legs, but like in terms of like complete exchanges, he was definitely the one who was winning those exchanges. Oh yeah, for sure. For That's part, really all so. that uh, Minity had for him was just fucking mm -hmm. his leg up. <laughs> I think it was like the yeah. second round, like watching it live, I might have like thought that Williams could have gotten it, you know, but like... Oh, I remember um, because I believe it was in the second round that he landed a pretty big shot on him that kind of stunned him for mm -hmm. a second, but it was also earlier in that round that John landed a big shot on him that they yeah. didn't count as a knockdown yeah. because his butt never touched the ground, but his, like, he stumbled down, his knees bent, his, his glove touched the ground for a second and he was back up. Um, yeah. So like... Between mm -hmm. both of them just getting one really big shot each, but Debella doing way more throughout it, I figured he should have yeah. that in the bag. Yeah, and yeah, that after a total of fifteen minutes, five rounds, they had the right person won. There, you know, yeah. easily John Debella got that fight. Um, but yeah, good performance, way to defend his title, and uh, hell yeah. But I do think with that though, that definitely proves and just puts the stamp on it that smell of sundell is the better hurricane oh for sure <laughs> easily the more devastating one <laughs> yeah hell yeah good fight though and that's gonna take us into the featured bout of the night which was another champ on the card but not in a title bout because he's the motherfucking muay thai champ um yeah. featherweight muay thai champion taiwan chai taiwan chai sun chai um and yeah, he was supposed to take on Super Bond, was going to defend the title, but mm -hmm. Smoke and Joe comes in short notice, changes it over to kickboxing. And um, I mean, Joe definitely get, like landed some good shots on him, made it a fight, but just overall, yeah. Taiwan Chai was able to keep yeah, the pressure was... on him and just, yeah, just outwork yeah, him, yeah, really. Exactly. Just was able to outwork him the whole time, like that. That's really all that was. 
but yeah. that all Senshi needed. Yeah, I mean, I like yeah, going into it, I thought that um, because wasn't it? Because wasn't it Smoking Joe that yeah he had the uh, two left hand uh, knockout losses. That's what I. Was, that's who I was mixing up with. Yeah, I don't yeah. know why I. It happened. We look at a whole bunch of different fighters and shit. You know what I mean. But um, all but, definitely yeah. fighters I'm unfamiliar with. So yeah, so it, <laughs> it is all good. Um, but yeah, so just knowing that fucking Taiwan Chai's got them nasty left side shots, thought that he mm-hmm. was going to be able to get the finish. Um, definitely a rougher fight for him than I thought it was going to be, but just still a good performance overall. Um, fuck. <sighs> I forget because I feel like what didn't he didn't he call someone out or something in the post fight interview? I forget now. I don't know. Uh, probably, but half the time I'm not listening to the broadcast. Yeah. So, but I mean, he is. Uh, I'm pretty sure he was uh, number five ranked in uh the featherweight kickboxing division mm-hmm. heading into that. So I mean, you know, if he's looking to just have more kickboxing fights and not defend his title. I mean, I'd definitely be down to watch him fight Chingas Alizal for the belt. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. He was supposed to fight Superbon. Chingas was the last one to beat uh, Superbon, so I don't know. I feel like just kind of skip that one Four and just get lines. right to the big fight, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then, you know, if he fights him, beats him, and then, you know, Superbon wants the fight, I beat the man who beat you, now I'm gonna beat you. Yeah, it, yeah. I feel like it just it adds more um, storyline to it, and it's one. So they're all about the motherfucking champ versus champ fight. I don't see why they wouldn't be about it. You know? Nah, yeah, exactly. Nah, yeah, they exactly. Love that shit. I love that shit. Hell yeah! <sighs> but all right, this takes us into. I know it is our main event of the night. Yeah, I was so excited for this one. <sighs> mm-hmm. Mikey Musumichi versus Shinya Aoki. Um, I think. This was just a good example of uh, me not really knowing enough, you know, mm-hmm. and just seriously underestimating actually how good Mikey Musumichi is in grappling, because <clears throat> um, mm-hmm. this was not hard at all, <laughs> like no. not not even the slightest bit. Three mm-hmm. minutes and five seconds, he catches Shinya in a heel hook. Uh, calls it an Aoki lock, a modified heel hook, and so mm-hmm. just and it had like a whole moment afterwards of you know just explaining to like the crowd how like Shinya created that move and you know yep. like all these years later he's able to learn that and use that on him and it's just like a fucking just like the a, passing on of like a teacher <clears throat> to a student moment. Yeah, just absolutely legendary. Yeah, yeah. I, now one of five people yeah. to actually be able to submit Shinya like. <laughs> mm-hmm. Putting him in absolutely legendary territory. I'm good on that. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, for sure, because oh. I know with MK talking about, like, oh, it was just a mismatch, like, this guy's 40 years old, like, this guy has shown that even when it comes to grappling, while he hasn't been winning his last matches, he hasn't been getting finished. Yep. You know, like, yeah. his last grappling match was against Kato Rotolo, who is a bigger, more aggressive grappler than Mikey is by far, mm-hmm. and he couldn't get it done. He won the decision, but he couldn't sub him. Yeah. You know, like, it just really shows that, yeah, Mikey is that good. And that's the thing. It's it's Shinya Aoki. Like, he's such a legend in just Asian martial arts in general. Mm-hmm. Like, and such a good grappler. Like, I don't see how, like, oh, he's 40 years old. It's a mismatch. He's also weighs, outweighs him probably by, like, 30, 40 pounds. Like, no, it really wasn't that bad, actually. It, Mikey yeah, weighed in yeah. at 154 and Shinya at 167, I think? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it was actually the yeah because I wanted to recheck that this morning because I know I missed yeah. the teletape uh, when we watched it, but yeah, I was uh, very surprised that the weight difference was nowhere near as big as what I was anticipating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Shinya was like a few inches taller, longer, but the weight not that far apart. But even then, like when it comes to like at, during like the actual grappling match, like it, that can be a factor just in the fact oh, that like yeah. he isn't used to doing all that with that type of you know. So it could have been a, sure. still factor. So like. No, yeah. Just even then, like, being able to do what he did, like... No, yeah, because... Amazing. Legendary. With uh, that point, like, on the broadcast, they were saying that, like, Mikey's five losses, like, earlier in his career all came to bigger people than him. So it's, like, clearly something that just, you know, in earlier in his career was just a harder mm-hmm. thing for him to overcome, like, a bigger person that has mm-hmm. just as good of grappling, you know, or something like well, that, and so it's... 
And it's like, I mean, realistically, that... Mikey's only 27. Um, his last loss yeah. was 13 or 14 now matches ago, right? This puts him on like a 14. That, yeah, 14. Yeah, this puts him on streak. either a 13th or 14th uh, fight streak, winning streak. But um, mm-hmm. so that like it was at least a couple years ago. It's like he's just starting to come into like his physical prime yeah. and like, yeah, it's, well, that's no. awesome for him. <laughs> Not only that, but it's like, yeah, like they're like what we've okay, always said, ago. like there's weight classes for a reason, of course. Like mm-hmm. earlier in his career when he's like, you know, going against people who are just as good and they outweigh him, like, yeah, that's kind of the reason there are weight classes, especially in like things like grappling. Right. I don't know if he's got like uh, just more matches that just aren't on Wiki or whatever. Because I know one was the yeah, saying that he's on like thirteen, fourteen streak, but going on Ricky, uh, Wiki, it's um nine fight streak since his uh, last loss. Which was a uh, North South choke in twenty twenty one. Uh, sometimes they like Wikipedia isn't gonna have some. Oh yeah, true. It shows like his like record at fucking twenty two and three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, and I was about to say he's like sixty and five 60, or something. Yeah, sixty six and five or something now. Like yeah, sixty five and five. Um, somewhere in there. Either way, just so it's like yeah. Beautiful performance for Mikey mm-hmm. to get that done, and yeah, he. It really was just so easy. He just went in there, was like, "All right, let's uh, let's pull you into my guard," and just spent a minute and a half just trying to, you know, work for the leg. Finally, gets it and spends a little over no- like another minute just trying to, you know, work on the leg mm-hmm. to find like a spot to cinch something up. And yeah, just yeah, just snuck that arm in, and within yeah, ten seconds, Shinya was tapping as soon as he went for it. Beautiful work. <clears throat> no, yeah, beautiful. Other than that, though, um, I feel like the biggest thing to bring up on the one card is the fucking queen. Yeah, motherfucking Fajija. Um, this girl is just a fucking beast. An animal. She is 21 years old with a pro record of 206 <laughs> wins, 6 <laughs> losses, and 3 draws. That's incredible yeah I, it's uh-huh. easily the best record i've ever seen because you <laughs> see people once they start sitting hitting the hundreds they already have at least 20 losses under their belt too mm-hmm. like at minimum you know <clears throat> yeah. she has 200 more wins than she does losses that's insane <laughs> yeah also five and oh in boxing beautiful <laughs> there we go <laughs> also like <laughs> Yeah. She, and she's just been on a fucking rampage since she started getting a bit older because she's obviously been fighting Last for a seven very or long finishes, time. Something like that. Um, seven or eight, or six to eight, something like that. Uh, no, last nine. Last nine. There it is. So yeah. yeah, nine. And then she had one decision in between that and two more knockouts before that. Yes, <laughs> just <clears throat> yeah, I. As soon as this fight started, uh, it was just, yeah, like I said earlier, it's like, oh yeah, this is a mismatch. Like, the mm-hmm. fucking Celeste Hansen should not have been in there with her. She, It was just target practice the entire time. Yeah. She had a couple of elbows in the clinch or whatever, you know, that touched up the queen, but nothing But she impactful. was just getting absolutely beat up the yeah. entire time until early in the first round, they called third it. Round. I mean, third round, my yeah. bad, my bad. Um... <clears throat> Yeah. It was just an absolute ass whooping. Yeah, the fucking body work was just so nice too because <clears throat> every time she come in, she just had Celeste covering up so big up top just trying to block the big big kicks, you know, big punches, uh, elbows, and just started ripping body shots on her. It, yeah. That she landed something in her hair that had her whole head just bloodied up. It... Yep. <sighs> yeah glorious performance um she's looking for a fight with the champ alicia helen rodriguez who we just saw get fucked up by smilla sundell um mm-hmm. i mean you know i don't i definitely don't know enough about either of them mm-hmm. to like actually know how like their styles would mesh and you know who would win but i just have the feeling <laughs> that the queen's just gonna fuck her. like i don't know man run over her, right yeah. Like, yeah also looking at her pro boxing record she fought all these in 2022. August, September, October, November, December. Nice. The first fight she had went to a decision, then TKO'd everyone else. <laughs> nice. She had her first fight, and was just like, okay, I understand this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just start yeah. putting these girls away. Yeah, that's insane. 
Yeah, she's probably gonna <laughs> be around one for some time and just fucking a whole yeah. lot of people up in the process. So. Yeah, I think we're gonna see her as champ real soon. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if she gets that fight. Yeah. But that was a rough oh, loss for Alicia, so um, we'll see. Yeah, she should probably have some time off. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, this is uh, in between, like it was at a 121 pound catch weight. Um, mm -hmm. She'd normally be fighting at a 115, but... Mm -hmm. She wants to get the person that just beat Alicia, you know what I mean? Maybe maybe she wants some of that hurricane, you know? I don't know. I don't want to see her fight her yet, but... Yeah, that, <laughs> that would be quite a fight. Uh, a yeah. Smell would just tower over her, too. She's, <laughs> she's so how much fucking, taller than How her. fucking tall is the queen? What, uh, five, five, three. Three. five inches taller than... Uh, yeah. I, I think that was the same uh, yeah. height advantage that yeah. she had over Alicia. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it doesn't have a reach on um, topology, but <sighs> Who probably knows? gonna be shorter. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But I mean, <laughs> maybe yeah, maybe one day down the line. But um, I don't know. Well, it's just I mean, gonna be some good shit watching her fight, though. Yeah, for sure. Jimmy, <laughs> you say for sure on the reach. Remember, AJ Fletcher has a like sixty-six inch reach. Sixty-seven. Pretty sure Snow has got long arms. Did you not? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Hey. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll have to <laughs> look at the tail of the tape. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Solid night overall from one. Um, it was funny too because like going into the card like right as it was about to start and looking at like it overall, mm -hmm. they added in two Muay Thai fights like opening it up and uh, yeah, one of them was actually the queen. Um, but like they didn't have it on it earlier, so it was definitely cool. Got ten fights overall. Yep. Yeah. yeah. One be popping off. Definitely awesome. Now we get into Saturday. <clears throat> Ginger, you bro you brought this in here, so I'll, I'll let you bring that up. It, so we watched some Octagon in the morning, um, oh, as we like to, because it it's fun. Promotion out of the Czech Republic, it's fun most of the yeah. time. Honestly, lately, the last couple cars that we've been watching, they've been kind of slacking. Um, but there was a real this great moment. I was about to say, this one was no exception. Up to this point, was kind of slacking. <laughs> but in the main event... <laughs> They had a gaff in the tail of the tape. <laughs> Thirty-eight-year-old Carlos was allegedly fighting zero-year-old Pavel Langer in the main event for the two hundred five-pound championship. And man, they should not have let a zero-year-old fight in that promotion because he got knocked out in seven fucking seconds. Yeah, that man knocked and out a baby. <laughs> I just an infant. <laughs> Not even a year old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that was a really funny moment. It <laughs> was just, yeah, like, was just so what? funny. It was you, a first champion fight too, and so we're just all sitting here like, ah, this... how you fuck up like that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, man. they're really good at what they do. Top tier quality fucking control. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I hope yeah, they top. never get better though. Yeah, no. I live for moments no. like that. <laughs> it, makes, yeah, it makes it great. <laughs> Especially when you've had a shit card. Now you got a, like, a real fast knockout over a zero-year-old. Let's go. Yeah. Three Comes out in the fucking Terminator years mask. is elder. Like, <laughs> I don't think we've ever seen that kind of fucking age disparity in a fucking MMA Never. fight before. Never. That's crazy. But, that was, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was that, the funniest thing. Like, just like, oh, that, oh my no, god. Octagon kind of sucked on Saturday. Octagon kind of was meh. But, you know. <clears throat> but funny. good old octagon fights brought us into some good old ufc fights mm -hmm. and um uh, everything is fucked everything <laughs> is fucked now good shit for bobby green yeah you, you gotta fucking love him being able to get a win like that because one punch in 33 seconds was all it took for him to just finish grant dawson just folds him up and yeah, like, he followed it up with ground strikes, mm -hmm. but realistically, he didn't need it. The second Grant went down, he said... Yeah, he, like, <laughs> he was done. It was over. I... <sighs> I'm just so upset. Grant was the... As we were, you know, talking about in the preview, the, like, one person that hasn't fucking lost to just one or more people in the top of the division or whatever. Mm -hmm. And... Is he even going to be in the top 15 after losing like that? Like, yeah. It's like, I don't that's... think they should take him from 10 to out of there. 
I really yeah. feel like they should probably put him like I don't know, maybe like fourteen. Drop Diego. Um, yeah, right. But they might just take him out of the rankings. <laughs> to be fair, that's it's because it's insane. like even when it comes to Grant, didn't he get the um, like a top fifteen spot? Because yeah, the Demir is Magulov. He's not even here. And then before that, Mark Madsen, Jerry Gordon draw with Ricky Glenn, yeah. you know, like, it's not like he really even has. It was the streak. And then obviously the, Demir, yeah, for sure. Like, Cause Mark, uh, Mark yeah. Madsen, he's, you know, someone right outside top 15, yeah. honestly, Jared Gordon too, um, finishing both of them. And then just being able to like out grapple and beat up Demir over 15 like that. Yeah. No. Yeah, like, for sure. But I'm just saying that like with it being that, and then it being like guys right outside the 15, top 15 and then Bobby green, someone who is consistently a person outside the top 15 just knocks you out like that what if they're just like let's just switch places like yeah you know or maybe they might not put bobby right at 10 but move a few people up throw bobby in there just take grant straight out like i could just see them doing that although it would be fucked up (laughs) i don't think they will but it is just insane that you just Oh, <laughs> I just can't believe that shit happened, man. It throw- I cursed it-, it. I cursed it earlier you in the cursed- stream of being like, "Oh, Bobby's just gonna yeah. win with a one punch fucking knockout." And- <laughs> <laughs> Who would have uh, fucking thought that he would actually most- do it? Like, yeah, you fucked it up because you knew that nothing, and I realized you didn't put it in there. We're talking about topology. What? Um, you thought oh, that shit. you were just like, "Oh, well, when it comes to the main event, that's not changing anything. Mm-hmm. Our spots are solidified, so I don't give a fuck." Bobby knocks him out, one hit KO, and boom, it happened. He ha- it Basically. happened, and now you have to deal with the consequences because what the fuck is going? It happened to one fifty five now. One fifty five is just cursed. Okay, like, because- <laughs> so. I was kind of talking about it to Kate, like, you know, uh, when, while you're streaming and stuff and just, you know, like, getting yeah. the rundown going. Um, I genuinely think that there's only one thing left to do with the 155-pound division, and that is just, just fuck, like, all the rules of, like, how they do shit in any other division or mm-hmm. whatever, like... Just start doing crazy fucking matchups of, like, high-ranked guys, low-ranked guys, just getting shit around. If you have, you know, someone like uh, Gamrod mm-hmm. or whatever, him being able to get, like, a solid win over Fazeev, you know, and, um, you know, like, putting him on, like, yeah, just, like, a little streak, it just... Give him a title shot. Just fuck it. Like, mm-hmm. if you have a good performance or, like, you know, look good, just whatever, right. like, just, just give people title shots, like fuck all the bullshit of like That's just right. making people like you know have all these fights and like they have to work their way up and then beat a top five guy because these top five guys are just beating most people and they're mm-hmm. like not fighting the most often so just like fuck it if you got someone in the top 10 he beats someone at seven just give him a fucking title shot in the meantime like while you're trying to figure shit out and do some other big fights you know what i mean like right you just gotta start throwing shit together that's the only way to get new matchmaking mm-hmm. made which to be fair at the moment Gamrod's the backup in case anything happens to Oliver or Islam. Yo. We know Gaethje's waiting in the wings as well. Yeah. With that one over Poirier. It's really like right now the only ones where Benny's possibly going to be fighting Armin, which makes sense. Yeah, he's talking about the only how ones, he's going to possibly really on the, uh, 296 in December. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's been announced? No, it's not been announced, but he was saying yeah, that it could possibly rumored, be in yeah. December. Well, he was yeah. saying it himself. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then, really, the only one holding up top five anything at the moment is Chandler, because Poirier was going to take some time off after getting knocked out like that. That was just... But he's holding shit enough. up, too, because he's not he trying was, to fight anybody was. other than, like... He wasn't even trying to fight Benny. Yeah. No, I know. Deserving no, I know, fucking... I know. <laughs> no, I, know, I know, but what I'm saying is, at this exact moment... No, yeah. In this exact His existence time, is holding it up. <laughs> the only one who truly is holding up is Chandler Wayne on a Connor fight that may never actually fucking happen. <laughs> nope, Dana said la- uh yeah, yesterday that yeah, la- Connor's going to be in the testing pool next week. Allegedly. Dana said, <laughs> I know he it's said it. true. He submitted the paperwork. But what's That's in that right. paperwork? What's in those <laughs> urine samples? What's in the bag? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um but, but yeah no like 155 is just fucked at the moment uh in terms of what i want for bobby green to do next moicano's calling him out he's calling out hooker either of those fights i'm fine with it's too i'd rather 
I'd rather the little. hooker right now. You got you got to start making these the fights like with guys ranked like further apart. You gotta. Nothing will it, ever move if you have fucking thirteen fight fourteen and fucking ten fight nine and fucking seven fight six and nothing is ever going to change. It's taking years and years and years for this division to move. Realistically, who is Bobby going to fight outside of Hooker right now? And this Arvin's is what I was saying. This is where is this injured. is where the UFC's got to start doing shit, and they're just like, Dustin, we'll give you a little bit extra money or whatever, and you know, just you, they just gotta like start doing the shit where it's like, okay, like Bobby Green versus Dustin. It's like Dustin, if you beat Bobby Green and like one other guy or some shit, you can fight for a title again. Like you know, they just mm-hmm. like no, I know, I know. Like if but like with, you know what I mean? It's just I don't I don't know. They just, no, they just that, gotta start like, fucking I don't think doing shit Jorge differently. What, but my point is, like, at this point, like, I don't think Dustin wants to fight in December. Bobby wants to fight in December. You have two people who want to fight him in December. Well, then with that, then with that, you, I feel like you go with Dan Hooker since he's the highest, like, ranked guy. Yeah, like, that's why I, I would prefer Hooker, but, like, it's just like whether it happens or not, like what the UFC does, you know, it's the fucking UFC. No, nah, I, I know. think that makes sense. I just feel like that's the that. only way you're going to start getting shit moving, you know? Like it's just. No, I agree. Of how, it's like, you know, like... you had like Dan Hooker fight Jalen Turner and like they're just one ranking no, yeah. apart. Fucking Gamrod <laughs> Fazeev, you know, just fighting one ranking apart. Like, I, no, I, I agree. It's it just like. Nothing's going to change. <laughs> like I said, at the moment, Poirier is probably going to. Wait until early next year to fight anyone, anyway. Bro, just plug DP and Chandler right. out the rankings right now. Boop, boop. Take Gaethje out the rankings. And RDA. He's, B- he's BMF champ. Boop. Don't need a ranking. He's a champion. And, yeah, RDA. Four people out the rankings right there. Move them all up. RDA Let's go. RDA needs to be taken out in the fucking rankings. <laughs> he said he's not returning to 55 unless it's a title shot of McGregor. Like, take him out the fucking rankings. Yeah. But so 155 is fucked. Um yeah. and this just didn't help it at all. But good shit for Bobby no. Green. Just a yeah, fucking vet to get a like, just a beautiful knockout like that over a top ten mm-hmm. guy. Like that that's awesome for him. You you can't it, take anything away from him in that. We were all confused on why they did this fight too. Like it because if they had just done what they normally do, <laughs> and maybe this wouldn't have happened. Maybe it would have, but it would have been someone within the rankings and we would be like, okay, they move up, they fight this person, you know. The fucking Bobby Beans just <laughs> tossing a giant fucking wrench into those plans. Oh, yeah, no. Well, that's going to take us to the co main event of UFC. Motherfucking body bags, Joe Pfeiffer, ab- mm-hmm. fighting Abdul Razak Al Hassan. And this was. That, that was a beautiful submission over him. It, yeah. it was. A little bit tougher fight than mm-hmm. I expected. Um. Mm-hmm. But it was just, yeah, funny that, you know, it's just like, oh, probably going to get a first round knockout or whatever. As soon as the fight starts, mm-hmm. blast double. <laughs> blast double. Literally and we're all like, well, shit. Like, e- immediately. And then, like, when they were back on the feet, just tried to go for the standing arm triangle choke. Like, yeah. just pulling that so hard, just they were like, shit, this isn't going to be what we thought at all. <laughs> Yo. But after. I'm sure at one point, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Abdul also hurt. Joe Pfeiffer on the feet. Like, he stumbled back off of one of those shots, too. Yeah. It, I mean, Abdul, even at his elder age now, he's still a dangerous mm-hmm. motherfucker. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Like, it's. And last yeah. Thing, mm-hmm. Last thing to go is power. That's it. But, Shit is too. Uh, I mean, oh, sorry. He had the one loss in between it, but it's like, yeah, his last two wins still getting knockouts. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Not nah, hell yeah. It's. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's I how mean, he only wins. Oh, I didn't go yeah. through all of it. Yeah, all right, there we go. <laughs> yeah, that's the only way he wins. But to be fair, it's it was Alessio De Chirico and uh, Claudio Ribeiro. Barrio. Top contenders, <laughs> consistent top five talent in some regional promotion, right? <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, second round comes. Joe wants to take him down again. Gets him right into a fucking arm triangle and. Yeah, it, he had that big takedown. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. He just picked him up, slammed him. Like, but um, it yeah. it just it was kind of shitty in the moment because fucking you Abdul just starts tapping, but he had a closed fist, so it it was real quick. So you know, like I can understand why the ref, you know, kind of thinking that like he was just punching him or whatever. Well, yeah, because he's mm-hmm. locked up and like he had his hand in a fist. He threw one punch to the body and then brought it up and just went tap tap tap, but with the 
the fist that he threw, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. like, he's on his way out, so he's not thinking, like, oh, shit, tap. He's just, like, thinking he's tapping the ref, not really seeing it, because he just threw a punch, and he went out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, yeah. Man, that, that's, I don't know, it always gives, like, I just fucking hate it when you see someone get choked out, and mm -hmm. then, like, the body starts fucking shaking, and I'm just like, oh, my God, like, yeah. that's fucking terrible, man. And, but, yeah, and just with good. that, too, it's, like, you know, him tapping out. It, yeah, I just felt bad for him. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But it was beautiful. Yeah. That, it was a beautiful submission. And so, yeah, that's 3-0 uh, now in the UFC for motherfucking body bags. Um, finishing everyone in, in the UFC. The first time he went to the second round in, mm -hmm. uh, in the UFC now. But uh, he was saying that he wants to be paid to fight some of these top mm -hmm. 15 guys. And, I mean, he... I feel like he's definitely someone that the UFC can try and push to be a good star, like, at 185, yeah. you know, and just make big fights. Oh, yeah. Uh, but there are it, actually some decent names coming up through, like, outside the top 15 at 185. Yo, we get fucking him versus mm -hmm. motherfucking Chris Curtis? Him versus Chris Curtis? If they him don't versus Paul Craig. I was about to say, if they don't renegotiate oh, his now. contract and pay him more... <laughs> Then it's probably not going to happen. But him versus Nur Sultan. Nur Sultan just had to drop out of his fight. Uh, yes. Um, I mean, I don't really know. Uh, cause I, I know like didn't cause didn't Curtis had to pull out a little bit ago. Um, uh, I think so. Or was it his opponent pulled out? Yeah, cause he was supposed to fight Fluffy. Yeah, and he yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking... they both pulled out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Oh, it was the rib for him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. But uh, so I feel like you know probably like I feel like timelines might match up a little bit better, and it's like I, no, yeah. I um because I'm pretty sure Dana White was like asked about that, and he was like, nah, like we're he's like we're gonna <laughs> like you know huh. like we're gonna take care of him, you know." So I no yeah yeah I don't think that there's gonna be a problem I mean, him negotiating a little bit better money and taking like a top fifteen guy. That's it. Him versus Curtis or Imovov. The only reason he had issue in His pulled visa. out was because of Visa. Yeah, e either so one of them. Could... Like, Lower end of the top 15, yeah. So, yeah, that, that gets him right there. A big win over either one of them, you know, that he's mm -hmm. he's fucking flying up those rankings, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, so motherfucking body bags. Great win for him. Mm hmm. In the featured bout, though. Oh, this is why this is why you don't pick topology with your heart, right? You go with the <laughs> smart picks. Um, yeah. This is why I won. <laughs> Joaquin Buckley. Kind of just beat the dog shit out of fucking Alex Morono. Yeah. yeah. Um, Morono had some had some moments throughout, you know, the early part of that fight, just being a little bit of a scrappy vet. But, mm -hmm. but no. By the end of the third, that uh, oh. I'm uh. surprised it. I'll be honest, I'm surprised it wasn't thirty twenty sixes across the board. Yeah, he had yeah. Uh, one thirty twenty six in there, right? I believe that was him. One. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's rough for Alex Morono. He's only 33 mm -hmm. years old, not that old. But Joaquin Buckley at 170 pounds is definitely a much better fighter than at 185. Hell yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I know. Like he had some, he had some rough losses at 185. Um, two fight win streak now at 170. He's definitely mm -hmm. a decent name. I don't know if he gets a yeah. top 15 guy like yet, but. I feel like probably end up with just a fun fight with someone close to the like outside the rankings. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I'm just trying to think who right outside the rankings right now they would put him up against. Uh, 170s kind of. A... I don't know. We see. Do we see a rematch oh, yeah. down the line though of him versus Kevin Holland this time at 170? I was about to. I was about to say. Do we see that happen? Because that's entirely possible. I mean, I wouldn't be mad at that. No. Buckley's definitely a lot better than, you know, fucking than when he got schooled and Kevin Holland told him to fucking Just, wipe his booger and he said good man and then knocked him out. Then one, two. Uh, that's just... <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a fucking MMA moment. <laughs> yeah, for real. Uh, but yeah, oh. motherfucking New Mansa, Joaquin Buckley. Definitely a fun fighter in the UFC 170 pound mm -hmm. division. Oh yeah. But now we go to the greatest knockout artist inside the 155 pound division mm -hmm. motherfucking drew dober gets another knockout finish gets mm -hmm. 
um, into the number one spot of most knockouts in 155 history. Uh, yep. He was originally tied with DP Dustin at eight, but now he's standing atop that mountain at nine. This was basically the fight that we expected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't think Ricky was going to have much for him, and he definitely didn't. <clears throat> Drew just went out there just laying bombs on him. Ricky was not able to take that power. And after a great fucking glove grab where he was just oh spinning around God. like <laughs> just holding, holding it like on to like yo, shit. like with his other hand, Drew is literally just looking like What the oh, fuck? Do you oh. not see? <laughs> like no, like if there's any time there needed to be an instantaneous point taken, it was that. Like holy fuck. He, he didn't need it. Yeah, he, he did not need it, but holy fuck. He, he said, you want to grab my glove? Watch this. <laughs> yep, exactly. Just took all that anger. <laughs> but yeah, 2 minutes, 36 seconds overall inside the first round. Left hook, ground and pound, and yeah, that mm -hmm. shit was over. Drew Dober back on the winning track. Oh, and just, yeah, with just the, you know, holy shit, I won 55. It's just funny because, what, it was two fights ago for fucking, uh, or three fights ago, I think, for, um... Bobby Green now that he lost to Drew Dober, you know, just three fights yeah, ago, yeah, because he had the no contest with Jared, uh, beat Tony now just beat Grant. Mm -hmm. Isn't it funny that after the Jared, he was saying he was going to retire after the Jared fight, and then because it didn't go well, he it went to a no contest. He ended up not retiring, and now we're here. No, he's not retiring. His name was retiring. He's no oh, longer thought... Bobby Green. He's just King. Yeah, that's it. That's what he said. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> saying he was gonna retire and i'm just like okay no no no. he was retiring bobby green yeah yeah it's just king but he never yeah, no, his name legally say, changed to king yeah i know i thought that was, <laughs> that was part of it but no it's funny because like yeah he he beat bobby green loses to Ravola, who now is in the top 15 yep and then beats ricky glenn at the same time bobby green just beat number 10 <laughs> yep and is now gonna be in the rankings and then some shit where now fucking, like, is gonna fight Grant Dawson, Grant Dawson's gonna fuck up Frivola or something, you know what I mean? Like, that's just... Well, <laughs> at the moment, like, Frivola's... Well, no, because Frivola's gonna get beat up by Benoit Saint-Denis. Yeah. Oh, yeah. true. I, 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 I thought he had a fight lined up, I couldn't remember uh, who it was at the moment, but yep. yeah. Benoit. Yeah, so he's getting uh, pushed out the rankings real swiftly. <laughs> yeah, real quick. Real but yeah, 155. It, mm -hmm. In terms of... Uh, just rankings and trying to, like, you know, build title contenders that shit's fucked, but get some damn good fights, though. But that's gonna take us to the main card opener in the 145-pound division. Bill Algio versus Alexander Hernandez. Um, Hernandez definitely looked a lot better this time around at 145 than against yep. Billy Q. I thought Bill was... I thought it was gonna go very similar to that fight where mm -hmm. Bill was gonna get beat up pretty bad the first round, and Hernandez was going to get real tired and Algio's going to get, like, a sub over him. Um, but Bill was like, nah, we swinging and banging tonight, brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, oh, it was, like, the last 10 seconds of the fight he took him down. I was like, you motherfucker. Yeah. You should have done this 20 minutes ago. <laughs> 10 minutes ago. Yeah. Same shit, but yeah. Um, but yeah. Bill gets the UD over Alexander Hernandez. Um, yeah, it was mm -hmm. a good fight overall. Uh, I don't think that there was any fight of the nights on this card. No, nope. sure they just did four, yeah, four performance, performance One bonuses. for Green, Pfeiffer, Dober, and Nate Manis. Yep. But, uh, I mean, yeah, it was a good fight, though, to open up the yep. card. But the prelims, they weren't great. Yeah. Nah, yeah. This was probably the most... The worst time of just me watching the prelims, and I'm just like, damn, I just don't really care to pay attention to these, huh? Um, yeah, they were, like, <laughs> great. We, I know, like, most of us that watched the opening battle with Aldridge and De La Rosa, we we're kind of like, you know, half paying attention to it, half not. <sighs> And it was kind of like that for most of them. I think the one, the two we all were like mainly watching were was Arich Lang, Johnny Munoz, and Nate Manis and Mateus. 
Yeah, we could uh, we could start with that uh, Nate Manis and Mateus Mendoka one because, mm-hmm. uh, like you said, he got himself a performance bonus. Um, yeah. Just, Mateus, man. Just a classic <laughs> example of uh, leg locks in MMA when they don't work. You know. Yeah. When you just can't get it, like get in the right position, and you can't wrap up a submission right away, and you just start getting punched in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's all Nate needed was him in that position. Just starts wailing on him till he uh, he went unconscious at one point. And then, like, I think he hit him again. Kind of woke him <laughs> up with the ref stepping in. Yeah, yeah. it uh, was not great. Mateos now zero and two in the UFC. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, I mean, good shit for uh for Nate Manus though, right? Four yeah. moves to four and two after uh two rough losses to to Gear and Umar. Um, yeah, but it's like it's fucking Tagir and Umar. You know what I mean? Like that's like foreign to yeah. Yeah, I thought that's what I said. Um, I, I thought I heard uh, two and two, and I'm like, wait, what? Moves two, oh. four and two. Yeah. Probably. Okay. Moves. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. <clears throat> but yeah. Other than that, I feel like something that's kind of cool though is motherfucking Carolina, 37 years old. She was on a five fight losing streak. On got herself on a four fight winning streak now. Yeah, that's yeah. fucking awesome, man. Yeah, it, that's no, insane. It is. It, like, I mean, <laughs> realistically though, even in that fucking streak, like with like three names of like Jessica Andrade, Alexa Grasso, and Jan Janan, you know, um, mm-hmm. Michelle she, Watermelon, G- Michelle Waterson Gomez, and Jessica Penny, you know. Yeah, four years yeah. ago for Michelle, you know, that was when. Mm-hmm. Okay, much I didn't even. Yeah, contender. I didn't even realize that <laughs> yeah. that was four years ago. But yeah, so. It's not like they were the worst names, but that's an awful streak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and no, then yeah. yeah, when and then when she got subbed by Jessica, that's when it's like, okay, like this is what know. Tony's gonna do. Let's hang it up. You know what I mean? <sighs> yeah. And then they give her the fight against Felice Herrick, where it's like both of you should have just hung this up, and why are we doing this? Ends yeah. up finishing her, and then yeah, just Silvana uh, Gomez Juarez, Vanessa Demopoulos, and fucking Diana Belbita now like just yep. Awesome man, I fucking love it. She just, she just seems like such a good person in MMA. Just, mm-hmm. I don't know, it, mm-hmm. it just great to see her on a good little streak now. Oh yeah, yeah, she's in the top fifteen now too. Yeah, I, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know where she goes from here. She'll probably just keep on fighting until she decides to hang it up. Um, she gets the title yeah. at forty two. <sighs> that, that's like the one thing that I'm oh. like, no, I that know. with her being in the top fifteen, I'm just like, UFC, just keep, you know what to do here. Yeah. Don't do the thing you normally do. <laughs> like, uh. I mean, if they want to have her fight anyone in the rankings right now, I think her versus uh, Angie Hill. I'd be fine with that. That both older fighters, both at the bottom of the uh, top fifteen for one fifteen, could be a fun little fight. For sure. No, yeah, so. that, it would definitely be a good fight. And yeah, like you said, I would not be worried about uh, either of them getting beat up too bad. So you know, so it's no, like, yeah, it's like, yeah, let's not have her fight like someone like Lupe Gomez, Marina Rodriguez. You know, let's not have her fight any of these people. Like, please, no, no, please, no, 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 UFC. No. <laughs> oh, but all right, that's gonna wrap up the UFC card, though, and that's gonna take us into some motherfucking topology. Uh, remember when Jimmy said he was going on a really great streak don't on ever his two week streak? That. Don't ever yeah, remember did say those that. words being uttered from my mouth. Remember that? Um, I don't. Yes, I do. Personally, I broke that shit. I think I broke that shit. This was <laughs> yeah. I did my picks too fast. I gotta stop doing that. You gotta stop making Oops. excuses. You thought what you thought. Every time I do that, I always do mm-hmm. bad. And usually, then... <laughs> it's good enough to do better than Ginger, though. But because be I fair, recall, I also you... got fucked on Iwan Kute Laba. But I recall you saying that <laughs> you think too much about your picks. So when you go through too much and you look at too much, then that's why your picks are skewed because you you thought too much, you put too much effort into it, and now you're not doing that, and now that's the excuse. I gotta find the right balance. Mm-hmm. I gotta not look at everything, <laughs> but I gotta also not look at nothing. You know what I mean? Nope. I think you're just an excuse maker. Maybe. Anyway, Perhaps. I came in first. Excuses. Yeah, Katie came in first. I came in second this week. Uh, Ooh. <laughs> yeah. We all, I, I think shit. you had, I was going to say, Katie only had one more, right? And I'm trying to remember which one that was. 
off the top of my head. So Joaquin and uh, uh Joaquin and Morono fight. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, me and Jimmy both went Morono on that. And that's what we got robbed. Dealed our fate. Morono should have won that decision. Yeah, okay. Um uh because yeah, no, at that point, if Morono once Morono lost, it kind of sealed the whole thing. Yeah, yeah but, because it was like I got it because we were tied for a little bit, but I got ahead of you with yeah. the decision from Bill Aljo and Aljo mm-hmm. and um that's the how you Drew got ahead Dober of perfect. Huh? So I had that's how you got ahead of Jimmy. Yeah, I yeah, that's Aljo what I was talking about. Decision as well. Yeah, I'm trying to remember who I had in, what I had in the Dober. I had second round for Dober, which like probably you pulled ahead a little bit more ahead of me. Yeah, and then just overall, the one more right decision got me in first place. Let's go. Yeah, because we started uh, yeah. out real bad. Yo, you're lucky that fucking Felipe Linz had a tummy ache and couldn't <laughs> fight you on Kuzey Laba because he was getting knocked down in the first round and you would have came in last, motherfucker. Yeah. All because of fucking pooped his pants. I don't fucking know what happened. It's a medical issue. Pooped himself. Look, you're just salty you came in last. Of course I'm salty I came in last, <laughs> motherfucker. Because you beat me. That's all I care about. That's the worst thing. And fucking Stovo, honestly. That's just fucking no good. You know what I mean? This Stovo yeah, beat Stovo. Ginger. Yeah. Uh, it makes it slightly better that I lost to him, you know? But it's still not good I, I at all. I lost by 10 points. That's at least I wasn't dead off. last in the fucking topology group. You know what I mean? Yeah, no. I don't know what happened with uh, Leal uh, on that one. But yeah, that but, yeah, was... No. That was a horrendous night in Tapology. But yeah, for yeah. five correct picks out of ten for me with one decision and one semi-perfect. Historical. I had, I had five right, three decisions, zero perfects, one semi-perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and I had six right, two decisions, one perfect. Uh, yeah. 60 rough, points. Rough. I was about to say, one of the larger gaps in between first and last. Between yeah, 290 us three. to 400. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we've had bigger. Points. Yeah, probably. We've had bigger, but it's, only it's only 110. Yeah, it's yeah, really, not bad. No, it's that's not a perfect. Bad, usually, change, we're you know? usually a lot. There's a lot of times where we're a lot close where it's like only like 75 or 40 or whatever, you know? Nah, for sure. But alrighty. All that topology talk is going to take us into. This historic event, hooray, Bellator 300. They talk so much about how 300 represents, like, huh? Hmm? Oh, no, I, I didn't know. Saying, Whoa. Uh, <laughs> 300, you know, Sparta, and fucking... This shit was ass. Yeah. Bro, yeah, and, you know, in fact, I do this to say something else. Just wrap it up. Wrap it up. <laughs> this w- there were just so many things that sucked with this card mm-hmm. one most of the prelim fights were not good they no. were just boring just not exciting it's nothing at all mm-hmm. uh two them gold gloves fucking stupid look like the worst gloves i ever seen <laughs> in mma before three it wasn't even three motherfucking title fights anymore. It was two and a half title fights. because It yeah. wasn't four title fights. It was two and a half. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. you know, it went from four to three and then two and a half because motherfucking Ali Malay missed weight, so she couldn't even win the belt if she beat Liz yeah. Carmouche. And let's just fucking start there with the worst. The first and the worst title fight. Um, yeah. Liz Carmouche accidentally finishes Ali Malay McFarlane 17 seconds into the fifth round. Um, you cannot convince me otherwise. It, not yet. I'll I'll be honest. You couldn't convince me otherwise either because <laughs> she did not look like she wanted to hurt. Uh, she did. She just looked like she didn't want her. They, they. She just didn't look like she wanted to be in there fighting. I'm I know. Be fucking honest. <laughs> Just talking about so much how great of friends they are before it, after it, just really solidifying in your head, like, yeah, they're great friends. Liz before the fight saying that, oh, it'd be nice if I could just go out there and submit her gently, but knowing us, it won't be that, you know, we, something about like to strike or it'll be a war, whatever she said. It wasn't that at all. It wasn't that at all. Liz, the, the first round was a lot of nothing. And then it was just mm-hmm. Liz throwing her rear uh, kick to Ali Malay's thigh and she'd throw it. Ali Malay would clearly like be affected. She was clearly hurt multiple yeah. times and she would just back out, circle out. <laughs> Back yeah, from the, sec- from the second round, like it, 
her Alima Lay's mm-hmm. leg was fucked. She could barely do her, shit on it. Her being like four feet away, throwing a one. Two, I was just gonna say, yeah, Liz, Liz being that so out of range, like, just throwing shit. And I'm just thinking, like, making sounds with it. Love <laughs> on the jab. Try and get in close to land. She didn't want to touch her. I don't want to touch each other. That's what, that's the, that's what I remember you saying, "What are they making it a sparring match?" What did you, that wasn't even sparring. No, that was a beginner's class of learning how to throw some one twos and kicks. Like <laughs> me and Kate go harder on each other and fucking kickboxing. Yeah, class. easily. <laughs> <laughs> that that was some bullshit, man. That was because yeah, second round her leg is hurt and it's like oh someone can barely stand on their leg and they're not switching stances. Let me throw a leg kick every, like, 30 seconds or so, and every time I throw one and hurt them, yeah, just give them all the space in the world, like, and then... I was about to say, wasn't even doubling up on the leg kick, wasn't switching inside-outside, wasn't fucking... Nothing. Oh, my God. Because, yeah, When even she with... would fall down, she wouldn't even, like, throw leg kicks at her at... No, she'd back out. Oh, you wanna out get back and... up? I'm sorry. I didn't mean... I didn't mean to kick you off your feet, friend. Sorry. <laughs> like... And then, yeah. Because in the fifth round, yeah, when Olimale, like, kind of came forward with whatever mm-hmm. she was going to throw. Yeah, she and came ju- in with a one-two. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. Liz just, you know, kicked her leg. You've seen it just smash into her other one. It like, was, it was bad. It was a nasty leg. Yeah. It, it really was. It was. But the second it happened and she dropped, Liz is just standing there like, oh, my God. Like, you know what I mean? There was just. Yeah. She didn't mean to do that. That was an accident. No. <laughs> but, yeah, so. They- oh, you go, go. No, that's what I mean. It's like, oh, if I could only go in there and submit her off the head. It's like, you had her knocked down by leg kicks multiple times. You didn't even try to go to the ground. You didn't try shit. Like, you didn't want to do anything in there. Like, I'm going to be... This is the only time I ever think I'm going to talk this much shit about a fighter yeah. in my life. Because, holy shit, this fight was... It didn't look like she wanted to... It, I'll be honest, it did not look like either of them wanted to fucking win. They didn't want to win. They didn't want to fight. They didn't want to be there. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but if you guys are former tra- and you really don't want to be in there that bad, don't sign a contract for it. Yeah, yeah. they really never should have. Yeah, cause that just absolutely horrendous. Uh, yeah, that just fuck that shit, man. Fuck Liz Carmouche. Fuck Liam Lay McFarlane. Fuck Bellator too. Dog shit promotion, right? <laughs> yeah, but let's go Chris Cyborg. <laughs> yeah, because <Let's go. laughs> this was. After being so infuriated uh, from that fight, <laughs> this made me a little bit happy. <laughs> a little bit happy. You guys want to know how mad this dude was? This dude was fucking bloodlusted. Like, he wanted fights. I should have my heavy so bag set up last night. <laughs> yeah. He wanted people, like, he wanted there to be a knockout and for the ref to let go on a little too long. Yeah, like, he wanted a Mario that's how Yamasaki mad he was. in there. <laughs> it needed to happen for my brain. <laughs> I need to just go to bed. That's really what it was. Because <laughs> as soon as we wrapped up, I laid right down and passed the fuck out. It was too emotional on my brain. Too much anger. But <laughs> but yeah, Chris Cyborg versus Kat Zingano. Um, yo, for some reason, Kat was mad as shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, afterward. she just oh, hates God. Chris Cyborg. Talking yeah, about, no, like, I can see the good in everybody, but not in her. She's a bad person. Like, And then after... Chris fucked her up and trying to go over to her. She looked at her and was like, you're not my friend. Go. <laughs> and Chris was just like, Yeah, what? and it's like, it looked like she was about to try and get up to fight her. And I'm just sitting here like, Kat, you just had your chance. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> it was really funny because uh, Bellator's keys to victory for her was clinch and wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. Um, Every time they grabbed a hold of each other, even if Kat was the one to initiate, initiate it, and she, in the moment, had a better, like, you know, hold grip position, Cyborg just tossed her. Yeah. <laughs> it no, was, yeah. wasn't even comparable in strength of, of what no. was going to happen every time no. they, like, clinched up. You could just see them in the cage, and Cyborg just looked noticeably bigger than cat yeah like cat is a natural i think phantom weight yeah <laughs> like cyborg just... cuts down to make 145 yeah. like <laughs> probably like natural like a lightweight you know what i mean i was about to say probably 160 probably weighs 165 walking around probably would not be surprised but yeah and then cat goes to shoot in on a takedown Cyborg lands a short little uppercut in there, and Cat was like, yeah, fuck this shit. Just 
goes ground down. and pounds on top and yeah that that, yeah. that fight was the dober over. thing goes down and just immediately covers up yeah. not dober sorry dawson. uh dawson yeah yeah Imme- like same almost the same kind of thing just got hit went down immediately covers up boom 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 over yeah she knew there was nothing she could do to her no <laughs> and then they did a whole thing afterwards of like what does Chris Cyborg want next? And she's just like, you know what I want next. I want the next contender. And Liam McCourt got a win on the prelims mm-hmm. over Sarah McMahon. And it's just like, Bellator, yeah. why are you doing this? You're about to not <laughs> be here. This fight ain't yeah. happening. Like, what is... <laughs> it, so that, that just kind of threw me for a loop. It's the build-up yeah. for the PFL. <laughs> and then that's what had me kind of thinking, too. With this main event. It's not even the finals mm-hmm. yet. Of the fucking tournament bracket. Yeah. It's the semifinals. Yeah. Usman or Magomedov versus Brent Premis. And so we'll get to I'll get to the final sec. But like but just you know, off that point, it's like they're having the other semifinal fight in November mm-hmm. on Bellator three oh one. Who knows how that fight is gonna play out when the winner is gonna yep. be ready. Yep. When the fuck is this finale happening? How it's the fuck not. long is Bellator staying around <laughs> for? Like what? Uh, I don't. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> I know the fellow was saying this, that they were gonna run Bellator for a while as its own like separate thing. But so like, I'm are they if, just it's, gonna keep it as the Bellator brand? I mean, for like a year, maybe. That's terrible. Like, why are? Why would they do that? Uh, UFC tried to do it with Pride, and then found out all their contracts were illegal, and they couldn't get any broadcast because of the Yakuza. What? Yeah, but I'm just, like, for PFL to, like, why their brand is definitely better than Bellator. <laughs> like Because, like, at this point, they've already, like, you're, they, it's fucking PFL, like, it. Just PFL call it PFL, not decisions. the tournament series. Like, I don't fucking know, like, that's better than Bellator. <laughs> like, like, you know that fucking most of the executives in MMA don't make good decisions. They what don't. makes you think this was going to be different? That's true. But <laughs> just want to say <laughs> with the main event though, as you said, as we said, semifinals of the 155 pound tournament, mm-hmm. Usman Ramagamedov versus Brent Premis. This fight fucking sucked. <laughs> yeah, it was not good. It was not What how in the hell did Usman go 25 motherfucking minutes with Brent Primus at his fucking elderly age? How? How? But submitted Benson Henderson in the first round. Like, that... Usman Nurmagomedov is not higher on the GOAT list than Charles Oliveira. And that's what I was gonna say. It's fucking baffling that Ali Abdelaziz can even fucking say that shit. What the fuck are... It, because yeah, it's Ali Abdelaziz! Shit I ever heard. Bruh. That's why. Charles Oliveira has literally finished more people <laughs> under the UFC banner than times Usman has competed in his pro career. Yes. Shut the fuck up. Bro. It's, <laughs> and it's again. obviously over much higher yeah. level competition. I don't even yeah. care if it was but, all like, against fucking thing. slubs. <laughs> that's the thing, though. It's Ali Abdelaziz. Like, literally, if you are managed by him, he will fucking damn near suck you off because he just is so egotistical about his own fighters. That's true. Yeah. That was not the performance that Usman needed in this for Mm -hmm. any sort of hype or anything. Uh, Like, yeah, he easily won that, but it should have been easier. (laughs) And it's just like, yeah, it's like, woo, now he fights the winner of fucking Patricky and Shabley. Woo. Mm -hmm. Is it a rematch or another bad fight? Let's go. Fuck Bellator, man. This shit was so bad. How the fuck are they gonna act like this is their fucking, like, their fucking mountaintop peak or something like that when they fucking should've... clearly Kimbo Dada 5000 was a better event? Hell, 301, the next event's gonna be fucking better. I was gonna better. say, yeah, their next event is so much better. I know, but I just need to throw some more shade on Bellator oh, for that being so la- much better. Hold up, hold up, hold up. What was their last event? 299, obviously, but like... I couldn't tell you a it? single fucking thing. Edward oh, wait, versus Edward. Edwards. Yeah, yeah better be just that one fight makes it better that fuck this shit <laughs> that and uh aaron pico and pedro cavalio sure yep better fights all around like i'm trying to remember Bellator angered me it made me so mad that oh, i stayed yeah. up so long watching fights for so long just uh-huh. for that shit 
I couldn't even fucking watch the main event really mostly like through it. I can it was that made me so angry. Yeah. <laughs> Hell, you know what? One was definitely better. Bellator 297, Nemkov Romero. Yeah. Easily. Like I'd rather a fucking watch Yoel Romero wrestle a fucking wrestling dummy than <laughs> in the <laughs> octagon than watch those three fights. That would have been no, more no. exciting. You would have seen him tossing shit all over the place. Like, he would have been doing such fucking explosive things. Chris Cyborg did good. We won't throw shade on her. Yeah, Chris. But, no uh, matter that, five Like, people. that's like... Yeah. That's the silver lining in, like, the piece of shit that this card <laughs> was. Like... There was a sprinkle on I, top. It was just exactly, the Chris, like, Chris Cyborg can... doing what we knew what was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> Going back to that, like, honestly, there's no one I want to see Chris Cyborg fight except for Larissa Pachenko at this point. That's it. That's, That's it. really about it. That's the only meaningful fight you can do in that division, for sure. Like, yeah. And, yeah, you know, and I know I said I'd like to. If Larissa, I mean, not Larissa, uh, Kayla Harrison could get on, like, a good, decent little win streak, you know, to just mm-hmm. kind of re regain her brand somewhat, which it's, like, uh, it's hard at this point. I don't even know. She's yeah. older, too, but... I'd actually think I'd rather see the Chris Cyborg and Kayla Harrison fight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You think that would no, be more because, interesting? Um, no. Okay, the reason why is because I I don't know. I really think that if we get Chris versus Larissa, we're just going to mm-hmm. see that deer in headlights look from Chris one more time, and she's 38 years old. I think that mm-hmm. with Kayla, I think it could be more interesting. Like, I think it would last longer. I think that it might be more fun. Like, I don't know. And it would be good for Kayla. You don't think Larissa yeah, yeah. might have a little bit of just, like, just too much respect to her, for her of, like, Brazilian legend, you know what I mean? And just, like, I, I don't that's know. That's kind of the gamble you gotta take. Like, I think that that's, like, in all honesty, it's those two fights at the top. And then, like, Chris Cyborg has been doing a couple of box matches. She also wanted to fight uh, Clarissa Shields. Like, really, yeah. those are the only three fights I can think of that even mean anything. It's just, I don't know. I you feel think like Larissa just smashes her. Yeah, I feel That's like yeah. Larissa's on a fucking roll. Okay, on, she is. You know what I mean? With them being yeah. 10 years apart, too, and Larissa really no, just, like, yeah, she got that win over Kayla, and she's just been on a tear since. Like, that probably built up her confidence so mm-hmm. much, just being able to, like, That's get true, that yeah. fucking win back, you no, know? That, and, like, fair. I just, yeah, I don't think she's going to lose that in the. Because like oh like she you know what I mean I don't th- mm-hmm. I didn't like you know think that she would lose either I think I that just it think would she just smashes yeah. her I, uh, that's fair man that's entirely I, possible uh, like I said like the, the, still those are the only fights that yeah. I think though that the only thing I was saying with that is those are the only fights I really think matter for Cyborg anymore in terms of legacy yeah for her to even like get I mean, into it, those fights or <clears throat> win those fights like in terms of legacy like none of these that's true other fighters really fights really matter but yeah. i mean like also too in like terms of legacy like, it's she's already cemented it like yeah. that's my other and that's the she's thing like... it's like even with like if she were to beat kayla clarissa and like even if she beats larissa you know uh fucking mm-hmm. it i'm just like no one's gonna think she's better uh overall than amanda nunez you know what i mean like no i think like her... i feel like she's just already cemented as number two i mean i guess yeah. she she could just kind of further cement that for like further generations you know what i mean but no yeah that's what i mean like it, yeah, that's I, why i'm I like guess that's almost really like it. i'd rather retire than and else. But she's not going to retire or like she, she probably gets are the only ones that i care about yeah she probably gets some big money in pfl too fighting those names as well yeah, so for sure i mean yeah I, i'd definitely be down for all of those fights oh um, imagine if we got a chris cyborg they have to cut down to 45 and she was fighting when they were doing a 55 pound division you could just still do that because Clarissa <laughs> ain't going down to forty five. You no, know, neither so, like, is Kayla. I know. Yeah. Or right, well, she did. The, I mean. Um, she did one time in Invicta. One time yeah. in Invicta years one. ago. But I mean, she was talking about <laughs> trying to like come over to Bellator to fight Cyborg, and that would have been at one forty five mm-hmm. okay. too. So I was about to say, but or I mean, fight Amanda in the UFC, like yeah, that that's was true. The possibility, like, but I mean, if it, she doesn't have to, she's not going to. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. Like that's what I think, and I, I don't think Let Cyborg fight at one sixty five. And I think Cyborg would also be like, "Yeah, sure, I will cut another ten pounds. Why not?" That's yeah. like that's easy. Yeah, it's. I don't think Cyborg would have any fucking problems with not no. having to make forty five for a big fight. Like <laughs> I know, right? That's why I'm saying like those three fights. Go over to PFL. Do the do any number of those. One of them, two of them, all of them. I 
Yeah. But it's only those really fights that I care about. Hell yeah. But yeah, that's going to wrap up Bellator 300. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's going to wrap up this episode of the podcast, too. Uh, I feel like we definitely made the talks about the fights much better than the fights actually (laughs) were. Um, For Bellator. (laughs) But uh, yeah, other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Like and subscribe if you did. We got all of the links in the description. Check out me and Genji streaming on Twitch. But until then, we'll catch you in the next one. Previewing motherfucking Sadiq and Barboza. Let's go. Peace out, everyone. Let's go.